Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here and welcome back to another Primaris conversion video. Now instead of doing one of the regular Space Marine chapters in Primaris form, I'm instead going to be looking at a traitor legion and rendering them in Primaris form. Now before you type and scream heresy into the comments below, then hear me out a second. Now this is actually backed up by the law in the background. There is a conversation that's held between Call and Gilliman. Uh, and Call basically says, I've got the gene seed. I've uh, I've got the gene seed of all 20 of the original legions. I can create Primus Marines of all of those. I can resurrect the traitor legions. And Gilliman pretty much says flat out no. Just stick to the, the ones that were actually loyal to the Emperor. Now, I kind of feel that maybe Call has possibly done some tinkering behind the scenes, he's gone and created these legions anyway, um, maybe there's some chapters roaming around there, or some space marines um, from these new formed chapters are actually based on the gene seed of the traitor legions. So in this video I'm going to be exploring creating a uh, chapter which is very much based on the, um, the stylings and the themings that one of the traitor legions had pre-heresy and that legion in this video that I'm tackling will be the Alpha Legion. So let's get started. Let's start by looking at the finished miniature and discussing the aesthetics of the Alpha Legion. For this conversion I've used the Alpharius miniature from Forge World as inspiration. Some of the aspects of the Primarch miniature that I tried to replicate were the use of scaled armour, gems and crests on the helmet, bladed weapons with lots of curves and finally chains. So for this tutorial, I'll be using the Intercessors kit as my basis, but I'll be also using some additional components from some Dark Elf kits, particularly those from the Black Arc Corsairs or the Dark Riders sets. For these extra components, I would recommend sourcing them individually from a bit supplier or asking around your friends if you can raid their bits boxes. So let's start off with the simpler changes to the miniature. The first step will be a quick blade swap on the combat knife wielding arm from the Primaris kit. First of all, you'll want to use a knife to cut away the blade at the hilt. Using a blade will provide a finer cut than if you use a saw or clippers, and will also avoid damaging the hilt as well. Once the blade has been removed, use a file or the side of your knife to smooth out the hilt. Next, we want to cut away the blade from the Black Art Corsair's dagger. Use the same techniques as before, so use your knife and place it at the bottom of the blade where it touches the hilt and create a nice clean cut. You can then go ahead and use a hobby file or a hobby knife to sand down the area to create a nice flat surface ready for gluing. With the arm and the blade prepared, we can now bring the two together with a small dab of plastic glue. With the knife completed, we're now going to be adding some adornments to our helmet. And for this, we're going to go back to the Dark Elf Corsair sprue. You'll want to locate one of the small crest items that you can see here and remove it from the sprue. Once removed from the sprue, you'll then want to cut away or file down the small nub that's on the rear side of this component. This will ensure that we get a flush fit when we press it against the helmet in the next step. You'll then want to bring in the helmet and without using any glue, press it against the forehead. You then want to carefully press down one of the prongs on the top to get a nice backwards curve. Once you have an idea as to how far back the curve can go, you can then take away the helmet and carefully and very gently bend the component. After bending, you can now affix the component to the helmet with a small amount of glue. This crest will create a helmet which has been inspired by the miniature of Alpharius from Forge World. The next detail that I'll be adding to our Primaris is some scaled armour. Now this is going to be a little bit more involved in the last two steps, so it's entirely optional as to whether or not you want to employ it on your own miniature. Now for this we will be using some sculpting putty, but first of all we need to remove the crest from the torso. This can be achieved by using a hobby file to very carefully remove the crest until you have a nice flat surface. With our torso smoothed out we can now bring in our sculpting putty. Now the material that I'm using here is called Procreate and it's a two part putty, much like green stuff, although I do find that this is much easier to work with. So use a knife to cut away two small parts, remember to keep your tools moistened whenever you're working with putty to prevent it from sticking to the blades. Once cut away, mix the two parts together thoroughly until you have a consistent grey colour. With our putty mixed, we next want to start adding those grooves to the armour. And for this, I'll be using this tool from Mask Mini. Now, this is the Tube Tool Size 1. If you don't have access to one of these and you don't want to buy one, you could use the ridges on the edge of a CD case instead. But this is much easier to work with. Now, before you bring in the putty, you'll want to dampen the surface using some water. This will prevent the putty from sticking. 
You can then bring in a flattened piece of the putty and place it in the center of the tool. Once this is done, you can then bring in a rolling pin, which has also been moistened with water and carefully push the rolling pin along the edges of the grooves. Keep on doing this until the putty is only one to two millimeters thick. Once completed, you can then remove the putty from the tool, leaving us with some nice grooves across the surface. But we're only halfway done. You want to bring in your tool again and place your putty on the surface so that the grooves in the putty sit diagonally against those in the tool. Remember to use some water again to prevent any sticking from occurring. You then want to bring in your rolling pin again to press the putty into the grooves. Once you're done and you remove it from the tool, you should be left with a cross hatching effect, which gives us the impression of scales. Now, before you approach this next step, allow your putty to cure for a little bit. A roughly an hour should do. This will ensure that it's a little bit harder and a little bit easier to work with. You're not gonna accidentally press your finger and squash down all of those details. So once you're ready, bring in your torso that we prepared earlier and carefully line up the scaled putty across the surface of the armor. Remember to dampen your fingertips when doing this so you don't get accidentally stuck to the putty. Once you are happy with the positioning, carefully push down to ensure that the putty sits with the form of the armor. Once you can see the outline of the chest panel, you then want to bring in a sharp knife to cut away any excess. Be very careful when cutting away as you don't want to accidentally press too hard and damage the surface beneath. So take your time and remember to keep your knife wet. Once the excess has been cut away, leave the putty to cure overnight, and then once it's fully hardened, you can then bring in a hobby knife to neaten up and cut away any areas that you don't want. The final detail to add to our torso is a small band of chain just around the gorget or the collar guard on the armor. For this, I'll be using some fine chain, which I picked up from rbmodel.com. I'd recommend the one by 1.5 millimeter chain for this. Start off by applying a small dab of superglue to one end of the collar guard. You can then bring in your chain and firmly press it against the glue. After allowing the glue to dry, drag the chain around the other side of the neck guard and fix it in place using some more superglue. After allowing the second dab of glue to dry, you can then cut away the excess using some clippers. And there we have your completed torso. So before we move on to our next step, let's get all these components glued together. The final detail I'll be adding to our Primaris is a sheath for his combat knife, and this has been sourced from the Dark Riders set. But as the blade is drawn, you'll want to cut away the handle using a sharp knife. You can then go ahead and glue your sheath for your blade anywhere along the Primaris's belt. And here we have our fully assembled Alpha Legion Primaris. Now whilst I've used the Intercessor kit as the basis of this tutorial, you could apply the same conversions to other Primaris miniatures as well. Additionally, whilst I've applied quite a few conversions to a single miniature, this wouldn't be necessary across a larger squad. You can still create an interesting looking unit of miniatures by only applying a single conversion to each one. Personally, I would only apply this level of conversion to HQ units or unit leaders. Now before we finish off, I just want to say a huge thank you to Alchemist Workshops for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for up to 25% off the RRP of Games Workshop products, you should definitely check those guys out. And I'll include a link to them in the description below. And so that concludes this video on converting your primary Space Marines to represent a sort of Alpha Legion chapter. Um, now, if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below, and I will be doing the Death Guard next in a very similar way. Now, the uh, these two chapters that I've done, or these two legions that I've done, were chosen by you guys in a poll that I held on my community tab, and I'll be holding another one of those very shortly, so make sure to check that out. And you can vote for which chapter or which um, traitor legion you'd like to see me render in a Primaris form. Now, if you have any suggestions for other conversions that aren't Primaris related, you can leave those in the description below. I'm always eager to hear those. Now, if you're interested in supporting me and making these videos, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page. There'll be a link to it in the description below and also a URL at the end of this video. And from there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. And that just basically allows me to create these videos, buy the funds, the paints, the miniatures that I use in these videos as well. So it just really helps me out with those kind of things. So if you're interested and supporting me then please do check out that link so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye